Hello friend. Uh, recently, recently uh, one of the persons known to me called me over phone. That, uh, uh, actually, uh, he's a uh, elder sister. Uh, after fighting for two years, uh, uh, died of cancer. And after her demise, uh, uh, what will be the fate of digital assets? Um, he inquired about to me that uh, what will be the fa uh, if there will be any privacy issues of all the Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp account of his beloved sister. This is a very serious thing. Uh, uh, what going to happen? Because see, if we leave, if we come to this world, uh, uh, the death is tagged with our life. So everybody has to go, everybody has to die. Uh, but we do not want to accept that. The most important point is that now the time has come to think about what will be the future of uh, our uh, the data of our Facebook account, Twitter account, uh, Instagram accounts, our tweet, uh, WhatsApp accounts, our banking accounts, the PayPal accounts, the Google Pay accounts. What will be the fate of those digital assets? One out of, out of the three people in the world are using in any way or other different kind of social medias or uh, messengers or chat box or like this. So every day we are having our digital assets or data into this virtual world. Now uh, have we ever thought that what will be the fate of those data and those accounts after our demise? Whether we are ready to make any will the, the same way we are making for our uh, movable and immovable properties. Isn't it the time has come that we will also make um, our will um, for our digital assets? And recently in, uh, in one of the cases in USA, a uh, 14 years old girl uh, committed suicide and uh, after her suicide, uh, her parents uh, tried to um, access the mobile phone and the Instagram accounts of that uh, uh, ill-fated uh, um, tender girl and uh, they were not been allowed to access those data for the purpose of their memory as well as they want to know what prompted that young girl to commit suicide. In today's world, we need to know that uh, we have two identity and one is the physical identity and another our virtual identity and uh, when we die the um, real identity vanishes the virtual identity remains the same and so uh, what is the law of inheritance of digital assets how those assets be inherited our heirs uh, when will no longer be there so if we can make a will of our movable and immovable phys physical assets then why not we are going to make a will or if we are not going to make a will then what will be if and if we die uh, and if we die uh, without making any will of our digital assets so what will be the faith and how those data may be inherited by our heirs uh, when we will no longer be in this world so today uh, friends uh, the topic of this video is to um, see uh, what will be the faith of our Facebook account or our online banking accounts or our every kind of online uh, social sites accounts, our virtual accounts, our virtual activities, the accounts and the data, the uh, private and secure data, uh, the digital uh, um, currency, the digital assets. In many ways, um, uh, we are going to discuss today uh, the law existing in India, uh, whether uh, what will be the law of inheritance of digital assets and um, how are you going to uh, make a safeguard uh, so that your data, your, your private data, your acquired data which you are the owner and these online social service providers are only the custodian. The faith of our Facebook account, Twitter account and other on online accounts, banking accounts and others when we will no longer be in this world. Our heirs could inherit those data uh, without any problem or any kind of hindrance and whether we are ready to so today um, we are going to discuss about this uh, beyond the virtual identity beyond death and uh, that's why please watch the video till end and or the law of succession is allowed in case of digital assets or all these accounts and their data and who are the owner of this data whether these companies or they are only the uh, custodian of our data and uh, this i am going to discuss about in this video So after the death uh, of uh, anyone uh, in today's world, uh, 
uh, he was actually using the um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, WhatsApp, and all other uh, online on all other online medium and all this. And so, how these digital assets will be inherited? And uh, but one point we have to keep it in mind that uh, this service provider, these uh, online service providers, these online social media service providers, the online banking service providers, which are called in, in Indian law as the intermediaries, they are liable to comply a lot of formalities, a lot of legal uh, procedures uh, and others. So uh, there are issues of privacy, there are issues of security and all this. And so they cannot provide data. Uh, or uh, or any of the de or the details of the profile to anyone um, applying or demanding the, to be the uh, legal heir of that guy so uh, these these actually we have to see what are the uh, regulations what are the uh, basic uh, parameters these companies have to follow uh, prior to verify the heirship or the the question of inheritance and all this Say for example, uh, in our Google account, we might have sensitive sensitive informations relating to our funds in Google Pay, refreshing memories uh, uh, which may be uh, there in the Google Photos, uh, important doc, various important documents may be in the Google Drive. All these and many more in other sites, uh, our, um, your our ears may demand for inherit inheritance. So when the our heirs demand for inheritance, the, com the complications and the, the complexity of the law will evolve. The virtual, the law of the virtual world and the law of the real world will merge and, uh, and, and obviously conflict with each other. And uh, these are the questions left for open for the future to give an answer. So uh, in case someone have a YouTube account or a Gmail account or, or like this, then uh, in order to um, safeguard uh, his digital assets or data uh, or anything there is a uh, opportunity in the given in the help center if you enter, go into the google account help center you will see there is a uh, option for submitting request regarding a disease user's account and within that uh, there are some options being given that is what do you like to do and uh, choose the account of a disease user or submit a request for fund from a disease user account obtain data from a disease user account so there are also open for uh, option for inactive account manager and if we click on the inactive account manager you see the uh, the google is telling you that make a plan for your google account if you pass this away or stop using google so uh, uh, so you can, can make a plan when you are leaving uh, to make a plan uh, the way uh, you are transferring your data or your property uh, by way of a will or other kind of uh, testament in the same way uh, you can make a plan of your Google account if you pass it away or stop using Google so that we can uh, easily for the, uh, in the help center, the Facebook, uh, the Facebook is also given an option uh, in the same way. Uh, if you go to the uh, uh, www.facebook.com/help, so we we'll, uh, have this help center, and in the help center we have a option for memorialized accounts. The memorialized accounts are a way for people on Facebook to remember and celebrate those who have already passed away. So uh, in, in in doing so, we have uh, two options open. Uh, you can even you can choose to either appoint a legacy contact to look after your memorialized account or have permanently deleted from Facebook. If you don't choose to have your account permanently deleted, it will be memorialized if we become aware of your uh, passing. So, um, uh, so memorialized account uh, is actually giving the uh, friends and family member to gather and share memories after a person has passed away. And uh, that is also given a um, uh, security uh, uh, to the um, data um, within the uh, Facebook account of the person who died. So uh, there are options for legacy account. In a legacy contact, is uh, a legacy contact is someone uh, you choose to look after your account if it is memorialized. We strong the uh, Facebook is strongly uh, suggesting setting a legacy contract so your account can be managed once it's memorialized. 
so um, how come the account will be uh, deleted when you pass away you can have that plan also and uh, there are a whole lot of other options so uh, adding how you can add, add a legacy contract all have been given in the help center uh, of the memorialized accounts option so uh, that will help us to plan uh, our digital assets within the Facebook uh, after our demise so uh, it's just like that we are making uh, our uh, will or a testament and, uh, which is going to come into effect after our death uh, now uh, coming back to our in our information technology at 2000 if you want to try to understand what is data the data means a representation of information knowledge facts concept or instructions which are being prepared or have been prepared in a formalized manner and is intended to be processed is being processed or has been processed in a computer system or computer network and maybe in any form including computer printouts magnetic or optical storage media punch cards punch tapes or stored internally in the memory of the computer so you see the uh, definition of data has been given it is nothing but a representation of informations knowledge facts concepts or in instructions which are being prepared or have been prepared in a formalized manner so the whatever we are keeping in our uh, our um, digital media uh, these are my own uh, uh, data my own uh, properties and um, i own all these and uh, and these com these companies these online service providers are actually the uh, custodian of those data these are the properties or we own and after our death the law of inheritance or the law of succession definitely have a very important role to play over these digital assets. Now uh, come to the um, another very important thing. These Facebook, Twitter and all, they have a, uh, a huge amount of must comply for uh, provisions. And, the, uh, and they have to uh, like, even take an example as per Information Technology Act 2000, Section 43A, uh, there are compensation if these companies fail to protect the data. So your data kept in the, those uh, com uh, companies' custody and they have to protect the data. And if they fail to uh, protect the data, they have to compensate us. Wherever, sorry, where a body corporate processing, dealing or handling any sensitive personal data or information in a computer resources which it owns, controls or operates is negligent in implementing and maintaining reasonable security practices and procedures and thereby causes wrongful loss or wrongful gain to any person, such body corporates shall be liable to pay damages by way of compensation to the persons who are affected. And if they file a complaint before the cyber adjudicator, the compensation uh, may be up to 5 crore rupees. Uh, may, may be quantified as up to 5 crore rupees. Now coming out of the contravention concept, if you come to the uh, punishment thing, uh, offense concept, then you'll see uh, as per section 72A, there are provisions for punishment of this for disclosure. There are provisions for punishment for disclosure of information in breach of lawful contract. And it says, save as otherwise provided in this act or any other law for the time being in force, any persons, including an intermediary, who while providing services under the terms of lawful contract has secured access to any material containing personal information about another person with the intent to cause or knowing that the, at he is likely to cause wrongful loss or wrongful gain discloses without the consent of the person concerned or in breach of lawful contract such material to any other person shall be punished with imprisonment for a time years or with, or with fine which may extend to 5 lakh rupees or with both. So, so these are the few examples what the uh, these uh, online service provider are to be, be complied with when they are dealing with our data. So, so you can understand that um, it is not always easy for these companies to uh, somehow anybody comes and, and ask for information to be uh, and, and posing himself to be the heir of the um, uh, original account holder. So uh, because these people, companies cannot afford to do this kind, that, that kind of lackluster attitude because they have to comply with all these stringent and severe provisions of under at least information technology. So uh, what is sensitive personal data? Uh, and uh, if we uh, take the, uh, we take reference from um, rule 3 of information technology, reasonable security practices and procedures and sensitive personal data or information rules 2011, which are also abbreviated in short called the information technology rules 2011. As per rule 3, uh, um, the, the definition of 
what is sensitive personal data or information is given. Sensitive personal data or information so a person means person means such personal information which consists of information relating to password, financial information such as bank account or credit card or debit card or any other payment instrument details, physical, psychological and mental health conditions, sexual orientations, medical records and history, biometric information, any detail relating to the above clauses as provided to body corporate for providing services and any of the information received under the above clauses by body corporate for the processing stored or processed under lawful contract or otherwise provided that any information that is freely available for accessible or accessible in public domain or furnished under the right to information act 2005 or any other law for the time being in force shall not be regarded as sensitive personal data or information for the purposes of this rule. So we will be getting a fair bit of idea what's, what are the sensitive personal data or information. So um, some of them or all of them are contained in different online service providing companies or their services be it from the non-governmental organizations or be it from the governmental organizations. For example, uh, Aadha uh, uh, contains our biometric in, in information. After our demise or death, Aadha has got no uh, system of cancelling the other number. So uh, what will be the um, um, faith of a Aadha number of a person who has already died? So there are, uh, and uh, if we take the in a global rule law, that is GDPR, General Data uh, Protection Regulations, Article 4. Uh, it is a global regulations on privacy and all this. And as per Article 4, we got the definition of what is personal data. And personal data means, uh, as per this, any information relating to any identified or identifiable natural persons or data subject an identifiable natural person is one who can be identified directly or indirectly in particular by reference to an identifier such as a name, an identification number, location data, an online identifier or to one or more factors specified to the physical, psychological, genetic, mental, economic, cultural or social identity of that natural persons. Personal data breach means a breach of security leading to breach of security leading to the accidental or unlawful restrictions, loss, alterations, unauthorized disclosure of or access to personal data transmitted, stored or otherwise processed. So this uh, GDPR article uh, 4 is giving a fair bit of idea what is personal data and what is personal data breach. Uh, and um, uh, I have discussed in my um, um, five videos I have prepared on GDPR. Uh, more on these issues. So anybody interested in uh, in uh, delving in deep into the um, concept of GDPR, it is a global law uh, on privacy and or specially the data privacy. So anyone, uh, the viewer can go and watch those videos in my channel. So uh, coming back to our discussions, law of inheritance in India. Uh, we'll find that inheritance may be uh, in two ways. Either the person, uh, either the person can uh, uh, draft a will, uh, a prepare a will, uh, and uh, in the will, uh, the, he made some de legal declaration will with respect to his property or estate, which will take effect only after his or her death. So this is the will, which is giving a directions that what will be the faith of the property after the de demise of the person who is uh, making the uh, will. Uh, and it can happen that the person died without making an will. And in that case, the Hindu Succession Act for Hindus and uh, and, and few other religious people, uh, the Hindu Succession Act will going to prevail. And in case of uh, other other th other subjects, the Indian Succession Act will uh, come into play um, or other personal laws. So uh, if the person died without uh, making a will and all, so then Hindu Succession Act or Indian Succession Act or other personal laws will be applied. Now we have to see how much this law of inheritance is applicable in uh, in case of digital and all this. See, now that the data is nothing but a mobile property. We can, we can visualize the data as a mobile property. And um, what is the definition of the property? And the Sale of Goods Act 1930 is giving a uh, section 2, subsection 11 giving us a definition of what, what is uh, property. Uh, and it means the, uh, the general property in goods 
and not merely a special property. So there are uh, in sale of goods act, the property is defined to be a general uh, property in goods and not merely a special property of any kind. Uh, now we come to the discussions of documents and or transactions uh, wherein the information technology are not applicable. So as per the first schedule, as per section, uh, subsection 4, section 1 of Information Technology Act, five documents and their transactions inherent into it are barred, the five documents are barred from the periphery of Information Technology Act. One is Negotiable Instrument Act. Uh, number two is the power of attorney, um, power of attorney. Um, and number three is the trust deed or trust. Um, number four, a will. Um, and number five, uh, and in any contract for the uh, uh, sale or conveyance of movable property or any other interest in such property. So you see, uh, already there is a controversy and conflict that if we made a will, uh, and, and if that is in a will, for the digital uh, asset, then uh, the will what does not fit with the uh, does not fit with the information technology act, and information technology act doesn't interfere or doesn't recognize the uh, concept of will. So how can this um, making in these these postulates uh, or uh, or this uh, um, how can these postulates that uh, before our demise we're going to make a will and uh, give a directions. What should be the faith of our digital assets? Uh, so because there's a contrary to the law, because when we're making a will, the will will not come under the purview of Information Technology Act, which is actually dealing with the data in, um, which act is actually uh, dealing the data as a whole. So they are a controversy. So there, um, if you uh, delve deep into some uh, instances, you see in the year 2005, Yahoo was ordered by a Michigan court to release emails of the disease to his father. Uh, in 2018, uh, one Dubai uh, forum ruled that Twitter, Facebook and other social um, uh, network sites should deliver digital data in accordance of a legal will. In France and Canada, the owner of the data can make will, will and the heir uh, of those uh, owner uh, can access uh, to their digital assets. Inheritance of digital assets are accepted in other countries as well. In India, we do not have any law to that effect, especially covering the inheritance of digital assets. And we have Information Technology Act. That to Information Technology Act doesn't cover the concept of will. Um, uh, and, and that is why there is a, a big conflict rather than compromise between these. Another very important and uh, controversial issue is that if, for example, somebody is making will uh, for his uh, um, physical assets as well as digital assets and the digital assets includes the passwords or uh, authentication signatures or, or, or a digital signature or any other things and if you mention that passwords and other into the will uh, to, to, in, to in order to make the will specific then um, there will be a security breach issue because when this will is to be put or, uh, or presented before the court of law for probate uh, for obtaining probate this uh, password will become open to all so uh, this will then become a after admission this will become a uh, document which is open to all and anybody can after disposal take a certified copy of the same including the opposite party or any party opposing the probate so uh, see here the controversy is that that in a, in a will we cannot uh, ex uh, explicitly write the password or any kind of this um, uh, identifying data and that will be a catastrophe. So we need, um, the need of the hour is that we need some consensus between example, technology, law and the user of this technology and the law. So uh, so um, uh, in, in the near future, we might see some um, um, uh, consensus so that these issues, uh, these very important future uh, issues will going to be tackled in a very efficient way. In case of Aadhaar, there is a locking biometric uh, uh, concept and uh, say for example, uh, if somebody uh, uh, died, there are billions of Aadhaar numbers already generated uh, to billions of Indian people and every Indian is carrying one Aadhaar number which is his or her identity and, um, uh, and if somebody died, uh, then um, 
is there any scope to cancel that other number uh, otherwise there can be a question of mis misuse with the biometric informations uh, inbuilt in the other of that persons so uh, there are no provisions for cancellation but there is provisions for locking uh, and uh, as per the UIDA, you'll go to the UIDA website, you'll see I've, I've given the link here in my presentations that if you go to the um, uh, UIDI websites, you see uh, that as per the UIDI, any residents with valid Aadhaar card, uh, Aadhaar can avail the, uh, any residents with valid Aadhaar can avail the locking features which empowers an Aadhaar holder to lock biometric. When the biometric is locked, the authentication services using a biometric modality say for example uh, fingerprints or iris a specific error code 330 is created signifying that biometrics are locked so uh, if somebody died his or her um, ears can intimate the uh, uidi with authenticated documents and the biometrics in the other uh, will be locked that's another safeguard so in case of income tax return, say for example, a person was regularly filing return with the help of his digital signature certificates on online and, uh, and all of a sudden he or she died. Uh, and, and, and if in case of the income tax return has to be filed on behalf of the deceased, then, he, then his heir uh, can uh, do the thing as per the, as per the direction given in the uh, info, income tax department's guideline. And after the death of a person, the legal heir can file the disease return by going into the income tax website and logging into e-filing portal using legal heir credentials and go to the and go to e-file and upload the return. The legal heir can sign digitally the ITR of the disease using his digital signature certificates. So uh, these are the things uh, I have given some example um, of online services, our identity on the virtual world our um, uh, identifiable, personally identified information hovering around in different accounts, our memories, our banking documents, our photos, our vital important documents are there in various profiles. Our profiles itself are our virtual identity. So after our demise, what will be their faith? This is a big uh, controversial question because in if I analyze as I have already discussed, the, the existing long-standing laws and the newly uh, coming up information technology, information technology amended act and after a perusal of all these it is clear that the things are not that clear and there are getting out doubt. There is no finite clarity um, in respect of the uh, inheritance of the digital assets, the law of the inheritance of the digital assets and how this uh, um, demand or claim of uh, airship or uh, successions will be tackled in the days to come. The answer we are all looking for anxiously uh, in the future, uh, in the days to come. So uh, thank you my friends uh, for watching my video uh, and um, uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel to be stayed connected with uh, me and, and get all the notifications of my upcoming videos and um, stay tuned, stay connected.